You may remember a recent video that covered the expansion of the surface tools in 3D Coat when working in voxel mode. So for example, on an older build like 4.9.05, if you look here in the surface tools section of the tool panel right beneath the voxel brushes, when you're in voxel mode, the number of surface tools have been greatly expanded in recent builds. In this video, we're going to look at another new expansion of it to allow the user to not only use a smooth brush, which wasn't previously available before 4.9.41, but you also have the ability to use the shift key and the control shift key menus that are available in surface mode. Prior to this build 4.9.41, you could smooth whenever you are using surface tools as well, but you would have to select one of these brushes and then hold down the shift key like you would if you were smoothing in the voxel brushes. But now you also have a dedicated smooth brush. It's important, especially if you are using a 3D connection device. For example, if I wanted to smooth, while I am rotating about my model. That's hard to do if I'm having to hold down the shift key. Let's turn my frame off for the moment. I also should mention when you have the smooth brush chosen, it's important to remember that the red profile that you see here does not affect the smoothing degree. You need to hold down the shift key to adjust the smoothing amount. So no matter where you're at, when you hold down the shift key and drag up and down, you can see the smoothing value change. You can change it up here if you like, but it's most convenient to do it by right clicking and dragging up and down to increase or decrease the profile. The list menus for shift and control shift are identical. They contain different smoothing algorithms and you even have some algorithms for decimate reduction as well as reconstruction. When you use powerful smoothing it's somewhat like decimating, it's just not quite as harsh. It's going to try and optimize the mesh beneath your brush while it's smooth. Relax, it's just going to try and average the vertices but it's actually very effective when you're working on low to intermediate level resolution models. Let me give an example here. The other model was about 11 million polygons. This one is about one. If I turn wireframe on, you can see it's not super low poly, but it's not very dense either. If I were to try and do a little bit of sculpting here, just as with any sculpting application, you can run into occasions where areas where you typically would need more detail, you're going to have some roughness. And that's just something that a lot of sculptors just deal with until it's time to move up to a higher level of resolution. However, in the meantime, I would suggest that you can use different tools such as tangent smoothing, which is probably the most subtle smoothing effect. It's going to try and leave the shape intact. Relax is one small step above that in terms of not really affecting the shape. I'll go ahead and lay down some strokes to demonstrate. Relax will allow you to get rid of a lot of that roughness and still maintain a level of surface variation. If we right click and drag downward to reduce the smoothing effect, naturally we will get a more subtle smoothing result. Let me undo. Allow me to go back to tangent smoothing and I'll demonstrate that. Its job is to relax the extremely rough vertex tangents and nothing more. And again, if we want slightly more smoothing, we can switch back to the Relax brush, adjust the smoothing effect down to a very small amount. And again, this will allow us to remove the extremely rough parts while leaving the overall shapes of the brush strokes intact. 
powerful smoothing, as I mentioned. We'll try to optimize the mesh. Let's hold down the shift key. With the wireframe turned on, you can tell how it is restructuring the mesh beneath your brush. And that varies by brush size as well. Because of this restructuring, this is a very good tool to turn to if you should encounter any holes, tears, spikes, or any other types of mesh issues when working with a surface mesh. Reconstruct is another option you can turn to in that list, but it's considerably more harsh than powerful smoothing, and that's why I would probably turn to it as a last resort. Or, should you have a really drastic issue, you can always hit the Enter key, and that will voxelize the object and set it back to surface mode. If you're coming from a popular sculpting application outside of 3D Coat, you're probably familiar with the term DynaMesh, and that's basically the equivalent when you hit the Enter key if you're in surface mode.